the second day of the Commonwealth Trade and Investment Summit for 2021. My name is Samantha Cohen and I'm the CEO of CWEIC and it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here this afternoon and we've got an incredible panel of very distinguished women joining us. And before I introduce the chair of the panel, Shalom Lloyd, I would just like to uh, unashamedly give a short plug for this fantastic book uh, which uh, Mrs. Alakija, who is one of our panelists, has written and it really does have some incredible incredible nuggets, I suppose they are, on what she's gained over her journey through life and uh, it talks about leadership and the values and you know what she's learnt as, a, as an exceptional female leader and what she would like to pass on to the next generation, which I think is uh, a very fitting way to start this session, which is called Gaps and Gains on the Road to Equality and Showcasing Exceptional Women and preparing for the next generation. So thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Alakija, for, for sharing your insights with us. I'm now going to introduce the wonderful Shalom Lloyd, who will be chairing this session this afternoon. Shalom is a, a British Nigerian scientist with a BSc and an MSc in pharmacy from the Ukrainian Academy of Pharmacy and an MBA from the University of Liverpool. Shalom is also the founder of Naturally Tribal Skin Care, a natural chemical-free skin care company built on valuing healthy, ethical and sustainable living while empowering women and giving them an income. Shalom is also the Chief Strategy Officer at Emerging Markets Quality Trials, an organisation focused on diversity in clinical trials, providing the global pharmaceutical industry access to patients in Africa. She holds several NED positions, including the Milton Keynes Chamber of Commerce. Shalom is a World Trader Freeman and a Department of International Trade export champion, a mentor and a strong believer in the fact that anything is possible. So I'd now like to hand over to Shalom, who would lead this exceptional panel this afternoon of women leaders. Thank you very much, Shalom. Thank you so much, Sam, for that wonderful introduction. I hope that everyone can hear me okay. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for this session at the Commonwealth Trade and Investment Summit. It's a great pleasure to be invited to chair and lead this session. I have enjoyed a long relationship with the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, first from graduating the Commonwealth First um, Export Champion Program, and now joining the what a discussion that the council convenes. As you heard, hopefully from other speakers from yesterday and earlier on today, the Commonwealth um, Trade and Investment Summit was developed by the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council when the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting, um, Chogum, and the Commonwealth Business, Business Forum, CBS, was postponed for the second time, I think in June 2021. I was personally looking forward to this, uh, to Chogum and CBF, as it would have been the first in Africa. Um, because for me, having businesses here in the UK and Africa is quite close to my heart. But I look forward to the new dates being announced so we can actually begin preparations to meet in person in Rwanda next year, hopefully. In the meantime, I am delighted to have been asked to be part of this summit and particularly this panel. Um, the Commonwealth is home to some incredible, amazing entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, business leaders and trailblazers, but they're far too few. And many of them still find their path to the top blocked. We will look today at where this has been overcome and what we need to do. We'll also look at what established businesses and business leaders can do to nurture and mentor female talent. All you have to do is look at the panel that we have in front of you and you know that this will be a great discussion. For me personally, I believe that when you educate a woman, you educate a community, you educate a generation, you educate a nation. Those of you who have heard of the Alison Rose review, um, there was a highlight in that review um, that talks about up to 250 billion pounds could be added to the UK economy if women started and scaled up their businesses at the same rate as men. That is staggering. 
Now, if we move to Africa for a second, Africa leads the world in terms of the number of women business owners. In fact, women in Africa are more likely than men to be entrepreneurs. Women make up 58% of the continent self-employed population. In the recent World Bank report, I think it was called Profiling for, from Parity, it showed that women entrepreneurs across Sub-Saharan Africa continue to earn lower profits than men, 34% less on average. These are things that we should not just be talking about. I believe in we think it, we say it, we do it. It's time for less conversation and more action. So I'm delighted to be leading such a great pro high profile and diverse panel on this subject. We will hear from a woman who I absolutely admire, Apostle Falorum Shalakija, Vice Chair of Farm for Oil. Mrs. Alakija continues to be an inspiration for women across Africa and across the world. Her philanthropic work includes supporting women entrepreneurs, providing them with platforms to flourish. She recently launched, um, I think it was a billion Naira fund to promote women owned businesses in Africa. And the fund will support at least two and a half thousand business women. So welcome, ma'am. We have a wonderful woman who needs no introduction, Dame Martina Milburn, Group um, Chief Executive of the Princess Trust Group whose work, who work on developing skills and opportunities for young people. Thank you so much for being here. Amanda Pollinger, CEO of 100 Women in Finance, whose organization is working with industry to drive change in a sector that is male dominated, where there's far too opp few opportunities for women to take top roles. That is changing, we know that, but is it fast enough? Amanda, welcome and thank you for being with us. And last but not least, Eni Chancellari, Managing Director, YOA Insurance Brokers, who part of, who's part of the leadership team of one of Nigeria's fastest growing insurance firms. Her perspective, both from her own business, but also from an industry that can do more to ensure women-led businesses have the tools they need to prosper will be invaluable. Anita, welcome. So hopefully everybody out there can see that we have a powerhouse and I'm super excited. Before we begin, I would like to remind you all that the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council is a not-for-profit mem membership organization. They work on behalf of their members providing bespoke services. I have personally experienced the brilliant connections they have made for me and benefited from their convenient power. So if you'd like to know more about how the Commonwealth Enterprise Investment Council can help your business, please reach out to one of the members of the team. I will keep quiet in a second and let all this begin, but I just need to give you some housekeeping rules. The meeting will start today with opening remarks from our post in Florence Lakija. Then next, that will be for just five minutes, then next, we have our amazing panelists will give two minute opening remarks before we then move into a panel discussion. After the panel discussion, we'll open it up for questions and answers, but please feel free to put those in into the Q&A box. So we're keeping to two minutes, but we'll start now. I invite Apostle Florisha Lakija for the opening remarks for five minutes. Thank you. The chairman, Ms. Shalom Lloyd, my panelists, my co-panelists, and all other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Kofi Annan, a former Secretary General of the United Nations, once said, and I quote, gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It's a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development, and building good governance. I welcome everyone to today's auspicious event where we have come to discuss the age-long problem of inequality against women folk and to celebrate the milestones that we have achieved over the years. It's heartwarming to say that we have come a long way from when it was believed that a woman's place was in the kitchen. According to the World Bank, 
the report of 2020, women are estimated to be about 49.6% of the world population. Yet, the gap in the opportunities available to women in leadership positions at both the business and governmental are still quite wide. Women are still subjected to perennial biases, discrimination, and margin. The World Bank report of March 2020 indicates that out of three businesses, um, one of three businesses are owned by women. Therefore, if these women have access to finance, they will grow their businesses and contribute more to the GDP of their respective countries. All stakeholders, such as the government, the financial sector, and NGOs, need to support women entrepreneurs to bridge the finance gaps. At the Rose of Sharon Foundation, our NGO for widows and orphans, we have supported over 4,000 female entrepreneurs with training and interest-free loans, either as startups or to expand their businesses. Also, our Flourish Africa NGO estimated to improve, established to improve our uh, female and career women is in the process, as was said just now, of uh, commencing training for 2,500 female entrepreneurs, out of which 1 billion naira, approximately $2.4 million, is in grants will be given to 500 female business owners over the next five years. For any firm to be truly effective, they need to employ a diversity of skills, cultures, views, and values. When a corporate organization has a gender diverse senior uh, leadership, management and board, there will be an improvement in their financial performance and shareholder value. Women already sitting on at, at board levels should also support their fellow women through coaching, mentoring, and training so that more women can sit and be effective at boardrooms. Governments should also uh, legislate laws that enshrine gender diverse boards in both public and private uh, organizations. We must also ensure that uh, unseen biases that exist against women in our workplace is eliminated so that creativity, diversity, inclusivity, and productivity are not hindered. I trust that today's conversation will bring both, uh, for, will bring forth solutions that will hopefully be adopted across the Commonwealth nations. Thank you, and let the conversations begin.